Hello! So today we are going to be making this beautiful winterscape card. It's so simple to make. You are going to want to jump right off this YouTube video and get into card making as soon as you see how simple it is. So we are going to start with a piece of scrap paper to protect our work surface and then a piece of balmy blue cardstock and this is cut to three and seven eighths by five and one eighth and I'm going to start with misty moonlight ink and what I want to do is I want to work and color about the upper two-thirds of this card and I want it lighter around here that's either moonlight reflecting off the snow or it could be lights in the distance distance from a city. Um, if you added a little color, it could be Aurora Borealis. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it uh, Light Behind the Trees. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this new blending brush that is coming out in the Stampin' Up! catalog on January 4th. That's when celebration starts. And for those of you who've been around, you know that for every $50 of merchandise you purchase, you get to select a free item from the Celebrations um, little mini catalog. But there's also a, a January to June mini catalog that's got some fabulous items in it that you're going to love and I'm going to love showing you. My big order goes in on July, on June, June, July, whatever, January. Can't wait. So I've got a base layer of Misty Moonlight right there. And I'm going to add Night of Navy. So these blending brushes, what's so great about them? Well, it's so many bristles, I can't even begin to tell you. And they're very densely packed. It's so super, super soft. And it just gives really smooth coverage. You don't get the sharp lines that you get with sponges. Like I always get fingernail lines when I use the sponges because I'm daubing so much. Or I get the get the tech uh, the texture really of the sponge um, because sponges have holes in them and and so it gets streaky. And with my sponge daubers, what happens is they get a little uh you know dotty for me <laughs> they just end up being circles and it's really hard to just blend very nicely this one gives you a finer touch a lighter touch it just works so great and you notice i just start off a little bit just to get some of the harshness off the the biggest blob of ink off but as i come in i really want this to be um, a lot darker in these corners so I'll spend more time there and I don't want to spend too much time in here where my city lights are and now that I'm getting darker I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just start right directly on the paper because it's okay if that gets really really dark in fact I really want it to be dark now when you're adding a lot of ink like this you will notice that your cardstock gets uh, damp because it is it's wet it's wet with ink and so it takes just a little bit longer for it to dry you'll notice that but it doesn't slow down this process at all okay I think that's pretty good we're gonna stop there we can always add a little bit more later now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some trees from snow front now snow front is this set right here and I love it these little deer are so cute you have mountains you have trees you have a little cabin a little snowman this set you can make some incredible landscapes with I'm going to focus on using these three little trees so I've already got them mounted I put two trees on one block to save time and one on another so I'm going to start in my Knight of Navy ink and I'm going to stamp right at the tree line, which is where um, the uninked portion meets the inked portion. And without inking again, I'm going to move them up and over a little bit. So there's some trees in the back. And I'm going to repeat the process. Right. And now I can fill in some more with this other stamp. 
So you stamp as many trees as you want to. All right, sometimes I need to know when to stop. I'm gonna stop now, uh, maybe not. I'm gonna stop. stamp one more off and then I'll make a really tall tree right there in the middle. So it's a really short tree, but because I moved it up, it looks really tall compared to the rest. And there's a little space in here. Oh, Sharon, stop. You, you got to know when to stop. All right, that's good. My, my forest grove is complete. But what's not complete about this is that it's supposed to be a snowy scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my craft stampin' pad, white. Craft ink stays wet a little bit longer. I actually like to use the refill here and put just a little refill in the lid because I'm going to be picking it up with a sponge. So here I pick it up with a sponge and I am going to just sponge it on here on this lower portion. I'm trying to go in here in between the trees. It doesn't have to be exact because it's a, it's dark out and so the snow is going to be appearing a little bit darker and it's going to have some shadows with it. Some of the trees will be buried a little bit. That's why we don't see um, any of the trunks because they're all underneath the snow. And you can add as much or as little white as you want to. You may find that um, when it dries, it's not quite as dark as you'd like it to be. So go ahead and just add some more at that point. I'm kind of good with this. I can give it a little more texture by pouncing. So I'm good with that right now, I think. If you want a harder line between your snow and your horizon or the sky, then you can come in with a piece of scrap paper and there's just a torn edge here. And so if you put that over like that and then you just come in with your inked up blending brush. Again, I haven't cleaned it so it's still got some ink on there. And you can see it's a little bit darker and, you, and it makes a little bit more of a distinct um, horizon there. The only thing that's missing is gently falling snow. So I'm going to take a little paint brush. And this is just a junky brush that I had. And I'm going to take the Frost White, Frost White um, All Purpose Ink, Shimmer Ink. And I'm going to dip my brush in there. I don't need to get it too, too loaded. And then I'm just going to flick it. Uh, I flicked with the other hand, sorry. I didn't get enough on there. But what this does is this puts some little droplets on your paper. Oops, or big droplets. Oh, that's all right. It just, just depends on perspective. None of these are going to turn out the same way. All right, now I've got it going. So you've got a little bit of snow falling. I think I need a little bit more over in this area to the left. Okay, and so I have some snow falling. Don't worry if some of these dots are a little bit bigger than, than you'd like. Remember, it's all about perspective. So if those might be snowflakes that are very close to the lens, and then there are really teeny tiny ones, they're very far away or farther away. So that's your scene right there. And then all you have to do is mount it. So I mounted it on a, here's my, the one I did earlier. I mounted it on a piece of Whisper White, which is just white cardstock now. Um, the Whisper White has gone away. Our manufacturer closed down due to COVID, so they found a replacement. So if you order Whisper White, you may get Whisper White, you may get uh, the replacement white. Both fabulous cardstocks. 
but this piece is four by five and a quarter and then I mounted it on a Knight of Navy card which is a standard card size so when folded it's four and a quarter by five and a half. On the inside I have just a layer of Whisper White again four by five and a quarter and I've stamped the trees down here I've stamped them first generation and then second generation to give the appearance of some behind. And so a quick and easy card would make a great sympathy card or birthday card, thinking of you card. I don't like to write or put sentiments on the outsides of my landscape cards usually because I just, I don't want to disrupt the feel of the scene. And this scene is just so serene to me. I don't want to put any words there and I will save the inside. I'll put a sentiment on the inside, but I'll, I'll wait until I know what the use is for that. So anyway, that is a really quick and simple card. Um, I'm just gonna set this one to dry a little bit because this will stay wet for a little bit. You can speed it up with a heat tool if you want to. I prefer to just let it sit and go to work on some other things. But I hope you've liked this card. If you don't have Snowfront or its sister set Waterfront, I suggest um, taking another look because those two sets are fantastic sets to make some really great all season sceneries. This is winter, but you can certainly um, make a, a summer scene just by changing it up and putting some greens in there. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.